If I like to do drills, I would join the army. <laughs> That's not funny, is it? Hey, uh, yeah, I'm not into doing drills, and I know a lot of guys agree with me. And I've mentioned a couple of really good ways to practice, and um, people don't dig it. They think you should do drills, but um, yeah, I'm just not. I'm just not the drill type. Um, I think a better way to practice is to, to, and I used to say just throw all nine balls out on the table, but go ahead and break too, break them, and just try to run them out. And when you dog a shot, uh, or, or you just miss position, or whatever it is, just set, set the shot up, back up again, and then uh, keep honing it in until you get it ready, or the shot before, whatever. Whatever you screwed up, you have to analyze what you screwed up and then uh, just practice it over and over and over again. And if you do it and you make it ten times in a row and you get it through your head, I guarantee you're not going to ever dog that shot again. Now, the problem with this is people are doing it, and I was talking to a guy that watched my videos, I made a new friend named Eric, who watches my videos and pulled me over and said, John, um, this isn't working for me. I, I know how you practice and, and I want to do it like that, but it's not working. And, and I took him aside and we went over to a bar table and um, I analyzed what he was doing. And he's not pra he's not thinking it through. He's not, you got to take it to another level. And actually, you know, if you, if you're, if you have a hard shot, right, let's say you make the one, and you have a tough shot on the two in order to get to the three way. Um, you have to really analyze why you got yourself in a, in a tough position on a two to get in, to, almost an impossible shot to get back on the three. And, and it's going to be a lot like the video I'm going to roll here for you and show you how you need to take your thoughts a little bit further. Um, you don't want hard shot. You you want easy pull shots, but you don't want you you don't want to risk screwing up in 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 order to be perfect. You don't want to sacrifice uh, screwing up for being perfect if that makes any damn sense at all. Um, so many guys screw up because they're trying to get perfect and there's really no such thing as perfection. It, it might look that way when you're watching a pro, but they're never perfect. They're always, there's always a millimeter off somewhere. Um, and they're usually not trying, they're usually trying to get in an area, and I know people hate when I say this, and this was actually brought up by somebody, I'm sorry, I forget who it was, uh, regarding Jason Shaw's type of play. Jason's a very confident, very strong player. And, and Earl was commentating a match, apparently, between Jason, this is what my friend was telling me, and Earl, and Earl knows because he lived with Jason for, I don't, I don't know how long it was, but they lived in New York City and they practiced together every day. And uh, they were sharing an apartment or something. Um, so Earl knows, Earl knows Jason's game. And he, he's the expert here. And, and Jason uh, just shoots for an area. And he's such a good shot maker that he doesn't have to try to be perfect. So this takes the the the, uh, the the need to be perfect out of the equation so it takes the pressure off when you're just shooting for an area on the table to be able to run out and if he's a little bit off it's okay because he's such a good shot maker um, so you get that so that's where his confidence comes from um, the effort in not being perfect not not feeling like you have to be perfect on every show. Um, 
So I'm going to show you guys how, you know, you, you're, you might be practicing the wrong thing because you're not, you're not, you got to take your thoughts another level. So here you are with tough shot on the two to get on the three. In fact, a nearly impossible shot. But you made the one that was good. Uh, where did you screw up? You have to go back to where you screwed up. It wasn't the, the hard shot on the two to get to the three. It was what got you into being in a, in a tough position on the two to get on the three. And it might not be the one. It could be the break. I'm going to show you exactly what I mean. This is not a rainy ass miserable day in Tennessee. But I'm trying to make the most of it. <laughs> Send in the trolls. Where are the trolls? All right, come on, get it together. It's a shot on the two is not hard. I'll make the shot on the two all day long. But how are we getting on the three? And what pocket are we shooting the three? And what the hell are we doing here? And normally you would shoot this with bottom left because you're trying to spin the cue ball off the second rail and you're trying to distance the angle coming off the two going to the top rail. So if you go to two short rails real quick and you're going to come up above the six ball and on this side of the table, the left side of the table, in order to just draw the cue ball back for the four ball. It's normally a simple run out. But this time we have a problem. If we put bottom on this ball, we're going to go right into the four ball and we're not even going to get to the right hand side rail to spin it in shape for the three ball. So now what do you do? I mean, we might even make the four ball, not that it really matters. That's not what we're trying to do. It's not what we want to do. We never want to bang into balls unless we absolutely have to and we want to because we're breaking out the cluster. So this is how I wind up shooting the two ball. No, I couldn't put any bottom on that ball at all. I tried to spin it a little bit off the rail, but I just got a terrible shot on the three ball. So let's take a look at the graphics so we can get a better idea of what's going on here. And this is exactly where a player should stop and say, hey, I did something wrong. What exactly did I do wrong? How did I get in this position? And again, it's not because the two ball shot is hard. It's just like almost impossible to get on the three the way you normally would do it. You just can't put bottom on this ball. You're, you're going to screw yourself badly. Now, can you put top right on it and force it into the rail, the top rail, and it just come down center table and shoot the three? That's not a bad idea, but there's a good chance you're going to hook yourself behind the six ball. And that's because while it's true that the two ball is going to take a lot of that left hand English and the top rail is going to also take a lot of it, it still might hook up and you could find yourself snookered behind the six ball. I think you're gambling too much on that shot. I don't like it personally because a lot depends on the humidity, the temperature in the room, the weather outside, everything. So what a player's doing, by just a little bit of misunderstanding from me and, and just not thinking enough, is that they're not going back to the one ball. But in this case, if we go back to the one ball, we can see I shot it as good as I could shoot it because, again, that four ball was getting in our way. And we can go back to the one ball shot and look at it. And you'll see I hit the four ball, which causes the cue ball to come up and park itself right next to the seven ball. But it was, it was truly the best I could do with the one ball shot. So let's go back to the break. Was there something I did wrong on the break? And we can absolutely see for certain there was. The agenda with the nine ball break is to park the cue ball in the center of the table. I don't really care how you do it. But if you do that, your chances of, being, of having a shot on the one ball and being able to run this rack are greatly, greatly increased. And this is the shot we're stuck with, and I did the best I could. The natural, the natural shot is going into the four ball. I can't hold it up. I can't draw past that, that four ball. And even if I could, we're just kind of throwing the cue ball away and wishing for luck, and we never, ever want to do that. Nine ball is a game of control.
Now let's take a look at what happens when this cue ball is in the center of the table. Now we have a clear, clean run out. There doesn't seem to be any major problems at all. We're not running into any four ball and we're getting straight back on the two in the right position to get on the three, back on the four, and the rest is gravy. So great. We analyzed the real, true, complete root of the problem. It's not the two ball shot. It's not the position on the three ball shot. It's not the one ball shot. It actually is the position on the one ball because it was not a good break. What needs to be worked on is my break. And another good example comes up in the same exact game, and this one is on the six ball. I think I got perfect position on the six ball. But how are we getting on the seven? And the player will be left with a couple of choices. The natural path of the cue ball is coming straight into the left-hand side route and bouncing straight out. That's, that's just a little bit of top on that, and that's the natural angle. Because of that, we can spin this, and we can throw this cue ball down table with a little bit of top right. Actually, a pretty lot of top right, maybe two tips to spin down table to get straight in on the seven. Another option a player will come up with is to send it off the rail with top left to come up on the right hand side of the table to get behind the seven to shoot the seven in the bottom right hand corner pocket. Both of those options are not the way to go. You're moving the cue ball too much and you're trying to be perfect when you don't have to be perfect at all. If we look at shooting this shot center ball and just bouncing off the route at natural angle, we're going to have a cut shot on the 7. Now that cut shot offers perfect, natural, easy position, a 3 route position, so it looks like more than what it is, but it's all natural. You don't have to spin anything. You just go off 3 routes and you're automatically on the 8 and you're in a good position to get on the 9. It's easy. So you're trying to do too much with the cue ball, and you're trying to be perfect. And in that effort, that's where you're screwing up. So now, if you want, let's go ahead and look at the whole rack without any cuts and from start to finish and see how this works. And when it's all done, the conclusion is going to be John needs some work on the break, and he needs to stop himself from trying to get perfect. I was really going to bring a paper and pen. I left it on the table. I, every time I, when I was on the table, I put it on the table so I don't bring a pen. I was going to be on paper. on paper. I thought you were in the See how good I can.
Chris was wearing his shoe. <laughs> One ball to go. That should be up here and down here. I'll just move it. <laughs> I would. <laughs> See, this is a hard shot because the cue ball is on the map. It's really hard to judge. Stroke. There you go. There you go, John. Now let's see if I can run two packs.